Thank you so much for being here with us today, Mr. Rusbe Barucha. Thank you, Russell. Now, you're a well-known personality and figure. You've done so much with your life. You're an author. You've uh, made movies. You're a poet. You've I even heard your song the other day. Um, did you ever imagine or think when you were much younger, or probably even my age, that you would be where you are today? See, I'll tell you what. Uh, I was very clear from a very early age that I wanted to spend my life in art. I was very clear. Uh, storytelling came naturally from a young age, and I remember in my boarding school, we had to go to sleep very early, and I always suffered from sleep. And there were two, three other idiots like me. And I remember even when I was seven and eight, sitting down and telling them stories. Okay. Uh, I was in drama, in theatre, and uh, I've learnt a little bit of Indian classical music on sitar and mandolin. So I was very clear that art is. I felt real in art. I didn't feel real in life, and uh, life as per se did not light my bulb. and art became my anchor something to clutch on to keep my head above water where life was concerned and uh, my first book the last marathon came out after 10 years of me starting to write and i had to support a family so i got into journalism and there also it is art in its own way i became an editor i used to write articles So I uh, for me art is apart from god is god guru art is what keeps me i think sane and not life not life what was your first experience with spirituality per se i don't know if you call it spirituality I I wouldn't know if you call it spirituality but I was put into a boarding school at the age of 6 I was phenomenally mischievous and in the end my parents I think said ship this guy and I was in Billimore High School Panchkani and one day these braces were in fashion you know a lot of my friends in school used to wear braces I came home and I told my mom I want braces. So she said, "Hey, it's not some fashion statement." So I normally never asked for things. So I told her, "No, I really like it. I think it's nice and all." So somehow she took me to a dentist and that guy said, "Okay, I, if you want." So they bought me a pair of braces. And uh, after a few days, they were shipping me off to school again. That was the first time my mother ever talked about money. She told me, uh, "They are damn expensive. Don't lose them." First time that money thing came into my life. So I went back to Bulimoriyas, and religiously, three days later, I had lost my brace. And I think the first time guilt came into my life was here. Okay. my mother has told me first time about money and here i have lost it so i remember kneeling down on the side of my bed i'm putting my elbows on the bed and i folded my hands and i said god wherever you are you know help me to find the braces okay and once you help me to find it i'm going to pack it and give it to the matron and i'll give it back to my mother that keep it and i get this message in the head that going to the dressing room there's a mirror the mirror was on a cabinet so go into the dressing room and below the cabinet is your brace so i said okay thanks god this that and all went search no brace So again, came back and I said, "Kya, bas kya? You know, I don't have any braces." So the voice again said, calmly, 
go again and search. It is behind one of the pillars of the cabinet. Then I put my hand and it was there. So that was my first experience of getting a message. Okay, I must have been around six and a half. Then uh, around the age of 10 or so, we were on table and playing football. And in Panjagani, when it starts raining, no, those days, in two, three minutes time, you can't see anything. Fog comes in, the water drops are heavy. And imagine we are on table land. And somebody kicked the ball and it came near me. And as I started running after the ball, the rain and the fog came. And my whole attention was on the ball falling on the rocks, you know, the sound. And then suddenly again I heard this voice which said, Stand still, don't take a step forward. And uh, for some reason I always listened to the voice, you know. I didn't have a question or nothing. I thought it was just a natural thing, everyone had it. So I stood still. I could hear my friends shouting, Hey Ruspe, Ruspe, where are you? Don't, you know. And then when the mist cleared, I was one or two feet away from the precipice. So if the ball had gone down, I would have gone down too. So, I don't know if you call this spirituality, but it's comforting to know that they have been there always. <laughs> when you talk about they, is this Baba specifically? Uh, Ma and Baba, yes. So how does it work? Um, because you're one of the fortunate few who is a channel of mm. Sai Baba. Does he, ju- obviously nothing happens without the grace of a master, but how does it work? Like, uh, how how did it work after you started getting these voices? What Asad, happened then? Asad, I'm 55 now. I've been channeling since I was 29, 30. Okay? I ask this question to myself regularly. Why me? So, if you're waiting for some real great answer from me, you're not getting it. I don't know why he's chosen me. Certainly not for anything that I've done in in this lifetime, the hundred percent not. And I feel in no lifetime I could have done anything to deserve this kind of honor and privilege. And I'm, doing, I'm not saying it out of humility or anything, I'm just stating facts. But I also know one thing that Baba has, in one of his eleven promises, he has said, you ask me a question, I will answer you. So I think anyone can be a channel. I think anyone can be a channel. But there must be some prerequisites, right? Let's say um, if an average person or an ordinary person wants to become a channel, he has to be pure of mind, body and intention, right? What are some of the prerequisites, do you think? I don't even think that is a prerequisite. I've known great assholes who are mediums, not good people. But they yet get the energy. How do I put it? If you have done something in some lifetime, it allows you an X number of years to maybe become a Madhyam or become a catalyst or become a medium to the Goddess God Guru. And you had that period. Now, even if you don't use that period properly, even if you start deceiving people, fooling people, cheating people, till that period the energy will come through you. Remember, Asad, there's a big difference between Shuddhi and Siddhi. What comes through me, on a very broad level, you can say Siddhi. That need not make me Shuddh. Okay? So, I don't think being a channel is a birthright of a few. I don't believe that. Yes. Loving them, praying to them, keeping your mind in the now, 
quiet, silent, <coughs> meditating. These are good ways of enhancing the mediumship. But trust me, if you are destined to be a channel, you will be a channel. But it need not be that you will be a good human being. I agree with what you've said yeah. because in one of your books you've mentioned about the three gunas. There are there's um, sattva, rajas, and tamas, yeah. and then there is something that is beyond the three gunas. Yeah. And just because something is sattva, that does not make it right. No. So I agree with you. No. But how does the relationship work? Um, do you get possessed when no. you hear the? No, I don't. Uh, I have gone into trance, but Baba told me once clearly that. If you become a trance medium and somebody were to call you at 12.30 in the night saying, my child is dying, help me, you will not be able to help because I will only be able to come through when you are in a trance, in a particular place, in front of the fire, at a particular time. So he said, let's not do trance. And uh, he said, just be in the moment, I will come through any time. You don't worry, wherever you are, you could be in a cafe, which is kind of true. I have done one of my most powerful channelings in the most odd places, sometimes very high. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I remember once one lady called me up, I had just begun channeling, and one lady called me up. She has a channel too. And it was 10.30 on a Sunday night. And I had already downed three large old monks. She called me up and said, You know, Rusme Beta, my niece is missing. And uh, we don't know, she's had a fight at home and she's gone away. And uh, asked Baba. So I told her, Tai. I don't think I'm in a state to ask Baba. She said, why? I said, because I, I'm quite drunk. And then suddenly the voice from inside came, but I am not drunk. <laughs> and then Baba spoke through saying, tell her not to go to the police At uh, between 12 and 12.30 in the night. In two and a half hours, she will be there. Again I told her, I said, listen, I, I don't know whether I, my drunk voice is saying this. So. And she said, don't worry. And 12.15 uh, I got a call. She's back. That is a big lesson to me. And Baba only said the next day in the morning, okay, don't worry, just be in the moment. Whether you are drunk, whether you are angry, whether you are sleepy, whether you are in a cafe, you are wherever. If you are centered and in the moment, I will come through you. And that's how he comes. <laughs> Has there been any time where you have asked Baba something and Baba said, you are not ready to know this, so I cannot, I am not allowed to reveal this information to you? I don't ask Baba about myself. I don't. It's very difficult to know whether he is talking or my subconscious mind is talking because I'm entwined in it. Like my mother once had told me, Rusbe, you are like the best brain surgeon who requires brain surgery. <laughs> you can't perform it on yourself. So, uh, Baba has never told me I can't answer it. But many times he has told the person, Abhine. Okay? So, he's never told me, no, I cannot answer it. Yeah, there are many times he'll say, don't tell this to this man. He's told me something, but he said, don't tell him. That he has done many times. Okay, so I understand, means I have to keep it to myself. But, uh, I don't think he's ever told me, I cannot answer this. If he doesn't want to divulge, he'll tell me, Batman. So I understand. Now is not the time. And very strangely, maybe after three years, he might just tell me, Haan, wo kar do. And Then I'm scratching my head, Kya kar 
and then I'll say, oh, he had told me, Baad mein, that Baad has come three years later. And their concept of soon is very dangerous. When they say soon, <laughs> it could take 15 years. Oh, what I meant to ask was, have you ever asked him something like related to the secrets of the universe or any question that you're curious about? Asad, I don't give a fuck about all this. As I grow older, the only thing I want to do is love him more and more and be worthy of him and not forget my Aukat, which is the dust under his feet. Okay? That's all of us. Yeah. That's all of us. So that's it. Uh, I really don't get a fuck how the cosmos is operating. What secrets are there? Because now I've come to a point that even Siddhi and all is quite useless. And it has to be surpassed. Even in the it's, Patanjali Sutras, they yeah. have clearly mentioned you can get Siddhis through Aushadi, you can get yeah. it through Tapas. Ravana got it. There are so many people yeah. who got it. But the objective is beyond. We yeah. need to transcend all yeah, this. Yeah. It's quite useless. It's, you know, it's actually useless. The only thing, the only thing of substance is Bhav. How much do you love your master, your goddess? I think that is the only thing that matters anymore. And are you being worthy of them? Though actually we can never be worthy of them. But are you at least on the path? <laughs> and uh, see, yeah, spreading the light as much as you can. But the important thing is not being extinguished by the light of Seva. Meher asked me some time back, do you regret anything? And I said, yeah, maybe. 25 years of channeling with mankind, I should have spent it serving the animals. Yeah, I do regret it. Like you have mentioned many times, humans are the scum of creation who have the potential for I believe godhood. Yeah, <laughs> we have the potential of godhood, but we are kind of scum. No, but even when you talk about the cosmic hierarchy, mm. there are so many beings above us and yet our egos are so inflated. Yeah. Our lifespans are like a blink of an eye. And yet, you know, we yeah. give so much importance to the things that we do on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah, yeah. We are a self-destructive species. So you've had the privilege of meeting so many, I wouldn't, gurus, masters, whatever you would define them. I would say advanced seekers. Advanced seekers. Okay, let's go there. Actually, I was going to ask you this much later. There are so many words thrown around. There's sages. Mm. There's yogis, there's jnanis, and we all know there's so many yogas. There's karma yoga, mm. yeah. bhakti, jnana. We know that the destination is the same. Yeah. What is the destination? I don't know about their destination, Asad. You're asking me my destination? To love the goddess god guru more and more. But that's it. And uh, be able to give each moment one's very best and leave the rest joyously to the one. How does designations matter? Who are sages, who are yogis, who is a fakir as if they are not operating from complete bhav to the one. I think they are just titles. And history has shown that however powerful the spiritual master may be, he is not beyond anger, he is not beyond ego, he is not beyond greed, he is not beyond lust. That's why, you know, Sai Baba of Shirdi, Ramakrishna Paramahansa, what shines through Sadhu Vas, uh, Dada Vaswani, Swamiji Naik, what shines through is their love for the One. Baba would go on saying, it's not me, it's the Fakir. Ramakrishna Paramahansa was completely like a child in front of Ma Kali. Swamiji Naik would always say, no, it is Ma Mukambika who comes through. Don't thank me, thank her. I've done nothing. I'm just a Madhyam. Dada Vaswani went into his presence and then in two minutes you forgot Dada Vaswani and only Sadhu Vaswani emerged. That was his, I think, greatest power. <laughs> If you call about power of a master, 
I think it was Sai uh, Dada Vaswani's greatest power that he just disappeared. You were just in the presence of Sadhu Vaswani. Looking at Dada Vaswani. He never made you forget who the master was. What a phenomenal trait. I wouldn't even call it humility, you know, because in you, humility also there is an effort. This was just pure love. And that's why I say it's all about love. It's all about love. It's not about miracles. It's not about powers. It's not about anything. I think it's just about love. Because everything else will get you to the doorstep. Only love will make you enter. Now those who have done any research on you or read your books know what, where you stand on karma and where mm. it comes from. But where do you think we came from and why are we here in this human form? My interpretation? So the creator, Muslims call Allah, Zoroastrians call Ahura. I call her Param Shakti, uh, Adi Shakti Param Kali. Okay? She was, is and will be always there, throbbing mass of energy, Shakti. And uh, from this Shakti come out sparks. And we are individual sparks. And when we come out, there is only free will. And as we start using our Chota Dimag, the karma starts rising, right? And then depends where you are. The very fact that Hindus do Namaste means I bow down to the one within you. is such a profound way of greeting someone that I bow down to the one in you. And I believe any living organism being is throbbing with that power, Shakti, Ahura, Allah, whatever you want to call it. Okay? And I believe we all have it. It's just dormant. And those who are on the path, kind of slowly with their love and their tapas start activating it. And hundreds of lifetimes later you've activated it completely and then you are a master. And then that's where the problems start. Because then you get sucked into your disciples and devotees. And sometimes I feel that becomes a hindrance to move on. You know, so it's all about love, Asad. It's all about love. That's why for me, you know, people like Mirabai, the must, the God intoxicated, I think they are on a far more stronger footing with the one than sages and yogis and Sufis and all that. Because they are intoxicated. I would love to be only in that state. You know, in that dance with the one, you are completely in Nasha, like Rumi was, like Kabir was, like Sant Gyaneshwar. You know, all those beautiful people who, through art, I think art is one of the fastest ways you can reach the one. Especially, you know, singing. Especially singing. I don't think that much as writing and acting, but with the musical instrument, you know, or just singing your love, however fucking horrible your voice may be. Just singing it with love and I think that is one of the quickest ways. That's why you have Kavalis and Bhajans. 
and it's I think also a very innocent way of what are you doing in a kavali and a bhajan? You're just praising them. Or you're seeking their love. You know, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's yeah. Better late than never. At least at the age of fifty five I know this. I'd like to digress a little bit here. When you talk when you spoke about and I agree with what you said that in the beginning there was the creator and there was only free will. Uh, do you think there was according to the scriptures and according to the people that you've met and some of the books especially uh, Bapuji Dashrath mm. Patel's book The Om of All Things that you've written with him mm. he mentions that in the beginning there was just the creator mm. and then there were 108 souls and then we fell from Amar Lok and then we came to Mrityu Lok and of course the Vedas have also described this in details Asad it's their reality Religions have not even made up their mind how is life after death. Just Google. What do ancient religions talk about life after death? Not one religion agreeing with the other. If they can't agree on such a simple point. Then everything is your perception and my perception. I don't know what the reality is. This is what I think. Could be fucking really wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So go within, you want to find the truth, go within, don't go to the scriptures. The scriptures are somebody's reality, may not be the universal reality. Like there's a famous quote that says, The universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. Yeah, I agree completely. You know, we've got a quote, I put it in the last marathon. Is there behind every Zoroastrian prayer book? Uh, if you believe in God, no explanation is necessary. If you don't believe in God, no explanation is possible. I think that says it. That says it. This reminds me, Buddh means intelligence. Yeah. The one that doesn't have it, we call Buddhu. Mm. Buddhi is the one who is intelligent. Yeah. But what is it that transcends all intelligence? The Buddha. So that's what we need to do. Mm. But in your wisdom and experience, mm. and especially now, um, you've had the privilege of meeting so many people and mm. you've done years, decades of research into mm. this. What do you think happens to us when we die? Especially in your book with Conversations with Dada, you've discussed at length yeah. the astral plane and the causal plane and how there are spirits, your ancestors waiting to receive mm -hmm. you. What is your view on what happens to us after death? First, I would like to believe that if you truly love your Goddess God Guru, you have remembered your ancestors and honored them. I would like to believe that when I drop this physical body, when this body dies, I would like to believe that the Goddess and Baba along with my ancestors and loved ones would be there to receive me. Okay? I think we gravitate to a place which we have given most energy to during a particular lifetime. Okay. So if I am an angry man, I am going to gravitate to a place which is filled with anger. Till I don't understand, you no, know, I have to transcend. Then I have got a choice of come back or move, depending of course on your spiritual level. You need to have a particular spiritual level to be able to decide or have the power to say, no, I think I'll work my karma now from in the spirit plane and not go back. If you have any earthly desires, any earthly desires, the laws of gravity is, is going to pull you down fast. So it happens in the form of rebirth. If you are detached from the earthly things, the law of gravity is going to take a really long time to be able to pull you down if it does pull you down. So I believe we gravitate towards what energy we have spent our life in. 
and many times even in the spirit plane you can get caught up in all the paranormal stuff going on so even that is a hindrance to the real seeker okay i feel they are doing a lot of work upstairs i believe all creation that we see has first been discovered up and then transmuted even i think einstein said the same thing he said that yes i have done all this but i have not done all this there is something doing it right so i think they do a lot of research and and then you become guides and guardian angels to people here and there like i've had so many people who have passed away and they've come and said no we are taking care of children who are dying very young you know some people are saying that no we spend a lot of time with those who are about to die and are suffering so i think you once again gravitate towards what is there and if money greed lust ego is really predominant then the earth will pull you down so maybe in a blink of an eye you're back into somebody's body this brings me to the concept of time i think time within itself is cyclical or a paradox mm. right would you agree with me when i say that uh, i think time was created for mankind i don't think the, i don't think there is any time up there i think it moves differently yes. like einstein said uh time is relative so for what what us could be a 100 years could be a blink of an eye for it them is, on is. the other planes it has been written in the it scriptures is. yeah they say a uh, one year is one day S- six months is day and six months is night on top and then it keeps multiplying yeah exactly like that so you know how did uh really 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 far away ancestors live they didn't have time that Stoney's man didn't have time, and uh, they seem to have done pretty well for themselves. So, so, <laughs> so, I, I sometimes think time is something that human beings needed and they created. Is it? I am. I want to make a request to you, like how in your book you made a request. when you went to interview dada was uh, sadhu aswani yeah. when you went to the statue of the samadhi of dada yeah. aswani and like listen i know this man is really humble but i cannot write a book if yeah. this man is going to be humble in spite of all the books that you have written and you you've been very humble about your knowledge here which is which is what i'm trying to extract here and i know you you're someone who believes in simplicity mm. you have said time and time again i don't care about kundalini yoga pranayama which look and what is there i just care about love for yeah. everyone and everything and yeah. the love for the master but <laughs> there are a few questions that i'd like to ask you sure so um sure it is widely believed and according to most scriptures that were in kaliyug yeah however there is only one book called the holy science in which sri yukteswar who is the guru of uh, parmanasa yogananda and he wrote the book on the command of mahavatar baba ji Mm. He is the only one who says that we are not in the Kali Yuga, we are in the Dwapar Yuga. So, what do you? What is your personal opinion and view on this? Are we in the Kali Yuga? Does it? I know Rusbe Barucha does not care. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. But yet, I'm I'm still asking you. Uh, look around here, yeah, Asad. If this is not fucking Kali Yuga, then the descendants are fucked. Yeah, when Kali Yuga really comes, no, this is Kali Yuga. just look at us yeah we are like animals but that has always been there us be yeah yeah it It's has just that now no you know what asad the population ratio was different even in satyug there were assholes but by and large people were simple nice kind compassionate by and large i think now is got reverse you have few people who are kind innocent compassionate and most are i think kaliyug the other word for kaliyug is where your survival instinct has gone through the roof and everything is looked upon i me myself of course history has shown that mankind has been the scum since beginning 
and more people have died in the name of God than in the name of the devil. I think the devil is taking a long vacation. He is saying these guys are far beyond me. Right or wrong? So, I think we are in Kalyug, but we are at the tip of Kalyug. This is not really what Kalyug is. I have a feeling sometime down the line, when the gears really shift, that would be the Kalyug that we know about. We are not going to see it in our lifetime. Our children will not see it in their lifetime. But uh, could be we are in the no man land at the moment between two yugs. But we are more towards the Kalyug door. But this world is running because of those kind, compassionate, innocent beings. The countless poor people, all they are trying to do is keep their head above water and do it with dignity. The lady who catches the 7.30 Virar fast to church gate, cramped then goes to office, works, then picks up vegetables, catches the, you know, back to Virar from church gate, cuts her vegetables, goes home, cooks dinner, teaches her children, entertains her husband and sleeps and does it with a smile. I think, I think till that is there, the real Kalyuk cannot enter. The day this goes away, then I feel the real Kalyuk will enter. But as I told you, Asad, each master has a different take on many things. Let's take Sai Baba and Mayar Baba. I love them so much. Sai Baba believes that if you're behaving like an animal, you will be born as an animal. And in the Sat Charitra, you have incidences where two people have been fighting, fighting, and one becomes a frog and the other becomes a snake. But Mayor Baba doesn't believe in that. Mayor Baba says no. Once you reach the human species, you cannot go back. No. What am I to believe in? And I remember asking Baba and he said, No, you have to find your truth. You find your truth. Don't ask me about these questions. He said, I cannot say Meher is wrong. A mayor cannot say Sai is wrong. So in between these two great giants, the only way I am going to really, really understand this is by going within and finding my truth. So these are, I think, all terms here. You will have hundred different, different masters saying this is Kaliyuga. And you will have Sri Sri Yudhkeshwar Giri saying, this is not Kalyug. How does it matter? Are you walking the path or not? Kalyug go, Satyu go, ICU go, whatever. How does it matter? I think I understand your dilemma a little better now. Mm. Because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that even the masters believed and said different things. Yes. I'm just telling you, Google, no? What each religion talks about life and no, death. No, not talking about Google. When you have direct access to a master, yes, he's yes, telling you yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. You know, Meher Baba, Avatar Meher Baba has written a lot about why reincarnation is not there. Sai Baba has often said reincarnation is there where you will be born as an animal. These are two great giants here. Yeah? I don't know who's right, who's wrong. And I can't even marry or cart me here to analyze this. None of us. Yeah, so and the people that think they have yeah, are so meri, just deluded. Meri so Baba said, Tum dun dun na. You find your reality. Yeah, it, this reminds me. Each scripture says something different about masters. For instance, just the other day I was reading about uh, Jainism and how they have Arihantas and Tirthankas. Even, so, I don't know, there were five perfect masters when Sai Baba yeah, came. Yeah. There was uh, uh, Tajuddin Baba, Tajuddin Baba, Baba, Baba Jan, Baba Jan, Narayan Maharaj. So, 
in your view especially today where you like you mentioned and i'm and i'm quoting and i might be wrong you throw you throw a stone in the general direction of the world and you'll find either a real estate broker or you'll find a guru yes how do you identify what is real and what is not what are some of the key is the guru coming from humility selflessness and innocence very important not whether the guru is performing miracles but because that is siddhi one who performs miracles is not a guru one who takes you out of darkness into light is a guru right so if a person asks is this person taking me away from darkness into light is this person taking everyone from darkness into light because i could be a damn rich man you will project yourself differently to me but is this man taking every or is this woman taking everyone from darkness into light i think then you can at least explore and another thing the masters have said is how ever immature your guru may be however unready your guru may be the moment you have taken him or her as your guru then he is like brahma vishnu and shiva okay and you will be surprised it is your bhav your faith your surrender your love that creates the miracles it's not the guru otherwise sai baba should create miracles for his millions and millions and millions and millions of followers no why only certain followers experience the miracle is because it is their bhav their joyous complete surrender baba in channeling often says shraddha itni honi chahiye ki guru ko hila de do we have that shraddha to shake Mr Sai Baba of Shirdi So na mano to kahan bhi khuda nahi hai mano to patthar mein bhi khuda hai and that patthar will start performing miracles but it's not that patthar it's your devotion it's your devotion Valmiki the decoit became Valmiki by chanting mara 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 instead of rama 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 but his mind was on rama na so that's why i tell you asad aukat nahi bhulni chahiye ek baar aukat bhul gaya na sharvanash i i i i can't remember the quote exactly but it's um once you i think it's from game of thrones if you once you put the crown on the head you can't put the dog on the leash i think once ahankara takes over ahankara hi ahankari ko marega it's not it's not you will not be punished for your anger you will be punished by your anger asad the bhagavad gita says that we have we are made up of various elements right the yeah the pancha mahabhutas yeah yeah and then you are made up of two three other things and 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 your individuality the soul the atman that means right? yeah so once i asked baba that uh, how does one understand if a person has reached a particular level of spirituality and he told me when fame and dishonor mean the same thing to that person know that person has begun to walk the steps why because we may be able to drop everything asad eventually drop even eating food drinking water we been to the ego nahi jata hai you know what i'm saying that i doesn't go that's why i'm trying to tell you that they could be maharishis but if the i is not gone we're just vessels it is the will of the divine that is acting through us we're just tools instruments yeah so if that i is not gone no you like everyone you're else right. only with a little more siddhi you're right 
the people who do tapas who have earned enough good karma let's say even if they become gods even indra he's not what we think he is because he's also worried about losing his kingdom see listen to me first of all i think we have kind of sullied lord indra's name if you read the ancient scriptures like vedas lord indra was one of the high lights of the vedas everything is about indra agni vayu jal agni bhumi i don't know in the 21st century lord indra has been given quite a strange uh, twist so i don't know but what i understand what you're trying to tell me okay it does not matter whether you are a great sage or you are even god remember there's a difference between the creator and god, and god yeah. okay even if you are god you could yet be subtly ruled by ankar that means you you not understood the game but also as said priorities are different na if lord indra's priority is to maintain his godhood then he will do everything to maintain that godhood if your priority is to drop all the baggages and keep moving then you will do it it's your priority as said how do you distinguish whether something is predestined karma or free will for instance okay let me elaborate on what i'm trying to ask you here we all know the concept of karma when buddha was asked what is karma like dada he said don't get into it when your house is on fire you try to get out of the f- house you don't sit and question what it is and it's too complex rightly so yeah. but i'm sure you must have had this dilemma at some point where you are you have faced a difficult situation or a person you have wondered if i retaliate or if i take an x step is this karm will this come under karm or will this come under free will how do you you know have you ever asked baba say i'll tell you what there are many things that have happened in my life which i thought were my free will which resulted in disaster and uh, one day i met a sage and he told me this happened in your life this happened in your life this happened yes 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 he is saying kyu bahut ahankar aa gaya hai kya tujhe kya lagta hai tune kiya aise hi nahi ye to hona hi tha what he was trying to tell me is by even accusing myself that it is my free will that mm-hmm. created all this he's trying to say what you got such a big ego you think your free will can do this no it was part of the karmic plan right very difficult as said because you don't know where you are in the balance of karma and free will the more spiritual you are greater the free will you have that is why as said if you really reach the spiritual height and you fuck up the fall is horrible yeah because your master says boss <laughs> you had no trappings of circumstances and karma this is you right so it is very difficult to know so what i according to me now is if something goes beyond me after even putting all the effort and the only consolation i can give myself is maybe it was predestined right if i have to fight a battle and if ever i feel the need to be aggressive and if i get aggressive whether i'm right or wrong i'm creating karma Yes what i can do is i can project anger You've mentioned this yes, shallow anger and deep yes, anger yes yes 
Sai Baba of Shirdi and the Masters projected anger. They would be thrashing a person, suddenly somebody else would come, how is it, son, all right, all right, this, and then, then they again start thrashing. That is projection. But if you are consumed by anger, you will start screaming at this person also. Abhi nahi, chale jau. Right? So, if dharma dictates aggression, projected, yes. But be each moment in control. And God help you if you hurt a kind, innocent, compassionate being. And that can only happen if you are in complete control of yourself. Then you will know how to behave. Even if you are fighting five people, with each person you will have a different approach in fight. Depending on that person's involvement in the thing, right? That can only come when you are projecting anger. My philosophy after 55 years is give each moment your best and joyously leave the rest to the wisdom of your Goddess God Guru. I really think that has kind of lightened my shoulders. I am taking responsibility of all that I can do in the moment. Beyond that, I have cut myself off from the responsibility. Tu hi dene wala or tu hi lene wala. Why should I get into that equation? Paramahansa Yoganda says, no, Asad, God is simple, everything else is complex. I really, I read that book when I was 17. That's one sentence I've taken and used it through my life. And then Nautha Mayar Baba says, God is all merciful, but the path to God is merciless. Another statement which I have taken with me. And then my Baba says, Sai, Shraddha or Saburi. And the really me real meanings of Shraddha and Saburi. So, I think these three principles are good enough to live by. You know, I sometimes, I try to pick one thing from a master. Like my Prophet Zarathustra says, walk in the world with peace in your heart and a club behind your back. Which means what? Be ready. Be ready. Be peaceful but be, be ready. Be very peaceful but if the fucker is not going to understand then get the club out. Yeah, there is a Japanese saying, it is better to be a, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Yes, yes. So, this is war, Asad. We are, the Kurukshetra is in us, the Ramayana is in us, everything is in us. We are at war. The problem is, 90% or 95% of people really don't know which side they are fighting for. Very often, morning they are on the left side, evening they are on the right side. But that's the mind, right? That's the human mind, that's, yeah. that's it, it can be controlled. 100%. But that's who wants important. to control it? That's too much thing. effort. Too much effort. Too much effort. That's what yoga and the Patanjali Sutras are all about. The mind is merciless. It's going to drag you every day in a hundred different yeah. directions. Get it under control. Yeah. No, I either think you should just be in the moment. Forget the mind. Forget the control, Asad. Forget it. Because there also there is your participation. You want to be free from the mind, then get into the moment. That is the savior. The goddesses, Param Shakti flows there, inside. You know, because even trying to control the mind, the mind already has control over you. Because you are putting so much effort, no? <laughs> so the mind already is controlling you, Asad. The only way is to drop it. By dropping it is you are holding on to the present moment. You have not even dropped it, you have just held on to the present moment. And that is the only way forward. That's the only way forward. I know people who tell me, why don't you do a five-day workshop on breathing, meditation. And I tell them, boss, 
माय एंटायर लेंथ ऑफ द वर्कशॉप विल बी सेवनटीन मिनट्स उसके बाद चार दिन क्या करना है वो बोल दो नाउ वी मेड धंधा ऑफ एवरीथिंग एवरीथिंग इज अ ट्रांजैक्शन तीन तीन दिन की मेडिटेशन वर्कशॉप और तीन तीन दिन के ब्रीदिंग वॉट इज गोइंग After that, that. before that. No, no, it's wow. Kita diya. 55,000, one and a half lakh. Are bhenchud garib ko de do na. Or koi bhi mera YouTube video dekh lo breathing or meditation. 15 minute mein pata chal jayega. Abhi practice karo na. Lekin you don't have the fucking discipline to practice na. You can do the exact same thing with just yourself in a room, but no. That's it. Yeah. That's it. What is meditation? Yeah, just become one with your breath. Bas. So I met this friends, parents had come to meet me, and they've been meditating for over forty-five years. I said, "How do you meditate? Take a deep breath in, six counts, hold. Before you take your six counts, hold six counts and eight counts and six counts and eight counts, and then focus on your muladhara." Uh, I said, "Damn good." I said then when do you start meditating? But and they said no, there's a meditation. I said no, 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 no. When do you start meditating? When does oneness come in? You cannot do meditation. You can only be in meditation. Yeah. And then I tell people, no, कुछ नहीं करना है. Just focus on your breath. If a thought comes to you, don't fight it. Don't encourage it. Come back to your breath. I'm sure they must be going out. Isn't it? Two minutes of meditation, she taught me. But if I give a fancy name to my meditation, or three days of venture workshop, I am going to get people. Fifty thousand they will give. Later, they will say, "Wow, wow, 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 what a man!" And then four days later, they will stop doing everything I've told them. So, okay, you gravitate towards your own. The laws of magnetism comes in. No, no. Good. Yeah. What is grace? I had this question with Dada Vaswani, and uh, I said, if someone is being graced by the Goddess God Guru, which goes beyond their karma, then is partiality. Why shouldn't everyone have the privilege and honor of grace, right? And he told me, "Rusbi, grace is grace." I didn't understand him. Hmm. Six years down the line, I have understood. Yeah, grace is grace. We have really no idea why it comes on certain people and not on certain people. Maybe let's say. Fifteen lifetimes later, I'm on a very high place spiritually. I'm just giving you an example. And uh, Mary is going through something. She's obviously in another lifetime. Fifteen lifetimes. I think my love will overlook all her karma. I think maybe that is grace, where maybe in many lifetimes I have been so much in love with the one that the one hasn't forgotten, and maybe when I'm going through a particular time, the one says, "No, it's my child." Right? So I think that is grace with the goddess, Adi Shakti Param Kali. There's no karma bharma, kuch bhi nahi. Then, shod, kar do. Vas ho gaya. I am not interested in what has happened, why has happened, and what is going to happen. I don't want my child to suffer. Period. Everyone follows suit. Okay, ho jayega. So the guru is going to give an exception to you in really exceptional cases, and then, in all probability, will cut your karma 
thousand kilos into 25 lifetimes and then you will come 25 lifetimes to experience it or the guru says I will take it on and then the guru has to go through it but with the creator called Allah, Aura, Paramkali oh, kuch yeah. my college pass period and the teacher will say no no sir pass okay I don't want to know you. <laughs> you are getting it? But that power even the Guru doesn't have. That power even the Guru doesn't have. Because then, done it for me, what about you then? Oh, thoda impartiality hota hai, but because Param, Kali, Aura, Allah, they are just energy. It doesn't matter to them. They don't have a concept of partiality. That's how it comes through, grace. And they've got a phenomenal memory. Phenomenal memory. So, though I yet don't think it's fair, even I don't think grace is fair. Okay? Because I feel, <laughs> each one should have the same law. But when Dada explained me, I didn't agree with him. But maybe life has taught me that now. There is grace. What is the most memorable or fantastic spiritual or supernatural occurrence or experience you've ever had in your life? Once in a while I get this great wave of longing to be with the one. And it fills me up. It fills me up. It brings tears to the eyes. I think that is the greatest spiritual experience I've had. Not the channeling. Not the miracles that have come through in channeling. Not even sometimes the glimpses you get of the Goddess God Guru sometimes. You know. I think with her grace, with Baba's grace, they fill me up and I can experience maybe oneness, fleeting, or just that deep longing to be with them, which is so agonizingly exhilarating. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. This is the only the second time that I've met you. Yeah. But in the little that I've inferred about who you are so far, the only time that I've seen your eyes sparkle mm. and like how you said Dada has a childlike mm. smile, mm. that is when we talk about Meher or when, you've, when I've seen you looking at Meher or interacting with her. Mm. I think if it wasn't for this one earthly responsibility or attachment, you would have been long gone, right? Long, long gone. <laughs> yeah. She is the dory that is keeping me back. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay.